Through their interviews, the detectives learned that McGuire's motivation appeared to have stemmed from a recent arrest by the sheriff's office. One man in custody tonight after a courthouse explosion today that injured five people in California. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to West Coast Wrap. I'm Alex Savage. Investigators say the suspect in this case was due to face arraignment today at the Santa Barbara County Courthouse, the scene of that blast. Investigators say that an explosive device went off as the suspect, 20-year-old Nathaniel McGuire, threw a bag at the courthouse's security screening station. Five people were injured. All of the victims were treated and they have since been released from hospitals. Detectives believe McGuire was motivated by his recent arrest on weapons charges and they're looking into the possibility he could be tied to other crimes. Our detectives are also working with Santa Barbara County Fire to explore if the suspect is associated with several recent additional arson fires. Our detectives are in the process of serving warrants at both McGuire's car and his home. And McGuire is being booked at our Northern Branch Jail for felonies. McGuire was booked on several charges, including attempted murder. That courthouse will remain closed tomorrow as this investigation continues. A public transit bus driver in Los Angeles is being called a hero tonight after a gunman hijacked that bus and took passengers hostage. Police say the suspect killed one of those hostages. Fox 11's Matthew Seedorf shows us the chase that ended with that suspected hijacker in custody. The intense police chase of a hijacked L.A. Metro bus now leading to a response from city leaders. Every Angelino has the right to go about their lives safely. Mayor Karen Bass, along with L.A. County Supervisor Janice Hahn, calling the bus operator a hero. I want to recognize that Metro bus driver. Around 1 a.m. Wednesday, the driver activated the emergency sign, call 911, allowing some passengers to escape. A man held the driver at gunpoint for about an hour. Spike strips eventually getting the bus to stop. The driver pulled to safety, gunmen arrested, and one person killed from the shooting. We are acting with urgency now by making sure that when we have these incidences that the surge and the increased visibility and presence of officers are there. Officials calling for more police on metro trains and buses. It will make riders feel safer and be safer as well. Along with activating a new metro transit police force within five years. We need a whole of government approach. Ideas proposed throughout this year where we've reported on several passengers robbed, shot, stabbed, and even another bus hijacking. We've seen this violence involving metro in recent months. What more do you think needs to be done? Clearly the weapon detection system. We need to find out how uh, well that works. And then assuming it does, it needs to be expanded. The mayor referring to a pilot program that started this month at Union Station involving weapon detection systems. Is there any indication that it's working? I'm planning tomorrow to go uh, look at uh, one of the systems where it detects a density that would actually show they have a gun. And that was Fox 11's Matthew Seedorf reporting tonight. The suspect has been identified as Lamont Campbell. He's been booked on suspicion of murder and is being held on $2 million bail. The police chief in Scottsdale, Arizona, wants federal authorities to get involved in the investigation into recent threats targeting schools nationwide. Another threat put Scottsdale Chaparral High School on lockdown this morning. Police say they got a call claiming hostages were in a campus bathroom. When officers showed up, they did not find anything suspicious. No one was hurt. Parents began showing up at the school after learning about the lockdown. As a parent, uh, you feel helpless because, you know, I want to go in there and, and save the day, but obviously I can't. And you can see there's a, a lot of other parents here the same, you know, with the same feeling of concern, um, just kind of kind of hoping for the best. No arrests have been made in this case. Investigators say when they initially pinged the location of the 911 call, it came from inside the school. Later, they determined the call was made elsewhere and made to look like it was coming from that school. Several threats have been made against schools in Arizona this month with at least seven arrests. And the suspects' ages range from 11 to 15. Investigators don't believe any of those threats were credible. We are learning more tonight about Vice President Harris's plans to campaign here in the West this upcoming weekend. 
The Democratic presidential nominee will hold a rally in Las Vegas on Sunday, and the White House says she'll visit Los Angeles before that rally. Details on the stop have not been made public, but she's expected to attend a private fundraiser in L.A. Variety reports it obtained a copy of the fundraiser's invitation, showing tickets ranging from $500 up to $1 million. The vice president also expected to attend another fundraiser in San Francisco on Saturday. It's looking like Harris will visit Arizona's southern border on Friday. Two people familiar with her schedule confirmed plans for the trip to the Associated Press today. They did not want to be identified. So far, the Harris campaign is not confirming a border visit. Harris is focusing, of course, on immigration in the battleground state of Arizona, leading into her experience as a former attorney general of California. In that role, she says she frequently visited the border and prosecuted smugglers. Former President Trump says if reelected, he would expel hundreds of thousands of immigrants who've entered the country under two Biden administration programs. Today, Trump blasted those programs during an interview with Fox News. One of them allows people from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua and Venezuela to come here to the U.S. if they have a financial sponsor. The other aims to reduce an influx of migrant crossings by allowing asylum seekers to use an app to schedule a date to arrive at the border. And the former president put the focus on Iran during a campaign stop in North Carolina today. He suggested the U.S. adversary respects him more than his opponent. I will make America great again. They don't want that. Four years ago, our country was feared and respected, and our country will soon be feared and respected again. We have to have that. Vice President Kamala Harris made a campaign stop in the battleground state of Pennsylvania today. She offered more details on her economic plan, including investing in entrepreneurship and promoting U.S. manufacturing. The American people face a choice between two fundamentally very different paths for our economy. I intend to chart a new way forward and grow America's middle class. Harris's rally comes two days after former President Trump held one at a nearby university. The economy has consistently topped the list of the most important issue for voters this election. Recent polls show Trump still leads on that issue, but Harris is gaining ground. Striking Boeing workers will sit down with the company on Friday for the first talks in nearly a week. That's according to Reuters. The company said it's hoping for a response to its best and final contract offer. It's offering machinists a 30 percent pay raise over four years. That's a 5 percent increase from its previous offer. The union originally wanted 40 percent over three years. More than 33,000 union workers have been on strike for nearly two weeks now, shutting down airplane production at Boeing. New details emerged today about the Boeing airplane investigation related to January's Alaska Airlines door plug blowout. The information comes from a memo that was published today by a Senate subcommittee. Fox's Lauren Donovan explains what was in that memo. The first claim in it is that nearly half of all Boeing personnel felt pressured to put speed over quality. Another bombshell allegation in this new memo is the company is failing to document and keep track of bad parts. So there's no assurance these faulty pieces won't end up in an airplane. The Federal Aviation Administration is charged with overseeing safety improvements at Boeing. But this new memo seems to have the senators on this subcommittee convinced the FAA is not doing enough. In fact, some accuse the administration of giving Boeing a sweet deal. You know, to make sure your agency is holding their feet to the fire, I worry about these reports that there's this sort of fratty culture between the FAA and Boeing. Turns out the big topic of conversation today is right here in our viewing area, the Renton plant, the very same place that produced the faulty door plug, the cause of the now infamous Alaska Airlines flight blowout. These senators want to know what's been done since that January 5th incident. The FAA says they brought in 11 of their inspectors onto the floor of the factory in Renton, and they're going to add two more by the year's end, arguing this was an important boots on the ground pivot because historically they just do audits of the company. But the majority of the senators today seem to disagree, some calling it a token gesture, questioning the ratio of inspector per worker, asking in a factory spanning 1 million square feet employing 12,000 people is 11 FAA investigators enough 
Reporting in the newsroom, Lauren Donovan, Fox 13 News. Coming up tonight here on West Coast Wrap, claims of another U.S. Secret Service security lapse, this time involving former President Barack Obama in Los Angeles. Tonight, TMZ walks us through what a witness says happened, plus the Secret Service wasting no time in pushing back. Also, video circulating online shows vandals marking a Waymo vehicle with graffiti. See how situations like this one are raising new questions about passenger safety. And in weather, here's our live camera up in Seattle. Lots of cloud cover and some scattered rain throughout the day. We're going to have the updated forecast coming up. Tonight, the Secret Service is disputing a report about a security lapse involving former President Obama during a visit to Los Angeles over this past weekend. TMZ says they spoke to a security guard who was working at the Hollywood restaurant where Obama was having dinner with his daughters. The unidentified guard, who was armed, says he walked up to a parked SUV that was carrying the former president without being stopped by Secret Service agents. He says he took this photo of the president's SUV in an alleyway outside the restaurant. As he looks through the back window of the vehicle, he sees Barack Obama sitting in the back seat working on a laptop. This man is armed at the time, and he is within uh, arm's length distance of the vehicle. Now, he said there was two of Secret Service agents who were nearby, but who did not see him. That guard told TMZ that he returned to his post at the restaurant and that later in the night, Secret Service agents spoke with him and checked his credentials. In a statement that was sent to TMZ, the Secret Service called the details of this encounter inaccurate and said that there were never any Secret Service protectees in the SUV while the guard was walking down the alleyway. Video of vandals targeting a Waymo autonomous vehicle in San Francisco is circulating online and getting a whole lot of attention. A passenger, as you can see, was inside that car when the taggers approached. KTVU's Christian Kaftan reports this situation is raising some new concerns about the safety of passengers in self-driving cars. A viral video is now circulating through social media. In it, you can see a group of vandals apparently blocking the path of a Waymo. First, one person approaches and begins scrawling graffiti on the hood. Moments later, another joins him, and two others begin tagging the windows. The whole time, a passenger can be seen inside the vehicle holding a dog. Billy Riggs, an autonomous vehicle expert, says in all likelihood the incident was captured not just by whoever shot the video, but by onboard cameras as well. All of it is recorded by a vehicle. Um, the automated vehicle companies have agreed in many situations to uh, work with law enforcement when their, their vehicles are targeted, but also when other vehicles, when we have other things happening on the road, handing over some of that. San Francisco police are now providing more details, saying an autonomous vehicle company filed a police report saying this was just one of three incidents that took place over an hour and a half stretch early Saturday evening involving at least two taggers and someone shooting the video. This isn't the first time people have targeted self-driving vehicles. In July of last year, a group calling itself Safe Street Rebels put cones on cruise vehicles to stop them in place. This latest incident has people who've used autonomous services worried about passenger safety. You know, obviously safety concerns are going to come up from that side of things. So it's just like, well, if, you know, if it's, you know, starting with tagging, what's going to be next? Riggs says passenger safety is a priority for the autonomous vehicle companies. The first line of defense in this case, he says, making sure those doors stayed closed. You know, conceivably, they would not have been able to have, they wouldn't have been able to access the people in those vehicles. So I do think that, that um, those occupants didn't have anything to worry about. And we have to remember also that there's always a customer service representative available if you're riding in one of these vehicles. Ultimately, passengers say it's a disappointment now that the new technology has been targeted by vandals. I don't understand people who do that. Um, you know, everyone, everyone has their way of being a rebel, but this is, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. It's, it's progress. These cars are, you know, they can give us something that uh, will move us forward. Industry watchers say as autonomous vehicles proliferate, more incidents like this will likely follow. Around the world, we see this kind of behavior where there's convenient targets. Um, you do get some type of, uh, you, it's an opportunity to leave your mark. We have reached out to Waymo looking for more details about the incident and the customer inside that vehicle. So far, 
we've not heard back. In San Francisco, Christian Taft of KTVU, Fox 2 News. Well, a quick weather update. We're starting to see a storm track develop out in the, the Pacific. In fact, take a look at some of these uh, rainfall reports, as you can see, focused up in the Pacific Northwest and not just a few sprinkles. The rainfall adding up uh, over the past uh, 24 hours in a, in a few spots. So, yeah, you can see some impressive totals over the past day. It's clearly showing up on the satellite and the radar as well. So here's a closer look. As you can see, we have the typical low clouds and fog out toward the Bay Area coastline down towards Southern California and then up toward Portland and Seattle. Here's that system coming on board. You'll see the main energy heading out to the east, but now we're watching another one develop offshore and those rain chances could be going up once again by tomorrow night. This was Seattle today showing you all the rain clouds out there. A high today of 65 degrees in Seattle. Rainfall about 0.11 in the San Francisco Bay Area. Lots of cloud cover this morning. The main headline for the Bay Area significant cool down San Francisco today in the mid 60s. The heat advisory is no longer in effect. And then in Phoenix, they still have the heat out there 113 degrees. So that's the dangerous heat focused in Arizona. Once again, that'll be the story for tomorrow. Right now it's a 105 degrees in Phoenix, Las Vegas, 96 degrees out towards San Francisco, 61 and Portland, Oregon reporting 63 degrees. Here's the plan for tomorrow. As you can see this first system moving out, but there's still a chance of a shower left over about a 20% chance and this system could actually boost those rainfall uh, chances by tomorrow night. Clearing skies for the uh, Bay Area and temperatures in San Francisco in uh, essentially in the, uh, the 60s to right around 70 degrees. A warm day in Denver, Los Angeles, the typical low clouds and fog in the morning, and it's warm to hot out in the Phoenix area up above 100 degrees. In terms of the rain, once again, here's that system coming on board. So this is Thursday, 5 p.m. Those rain chances could be going up closer to uh, Seattle for tomorrow and then out toward the California area, out toward uh, Washington, out toward the Arizona and out toward a good portion of the Rockies. Looks like a dry weather pattern. It's here to stay for tomorrow. So here is the uh, Thursday outlook. As you can see here, the clouds, the cooler weather up in the north for San Jose in the Bay Area, 83 degrees. Southern California, Santa Clarita, Palmdale heating up into the upper 90s. And of course, the heat is still remaining in, in the forecast for Scottsdale and Tucson tomorrow, 105 to 100. 109 degrees. So here is the forecast, the game plan over the next uh, three days. Once again, tracking those 60s up towards Seattle, San Francisco, as you can see, look at that uh, temperature leap into Friday back up into the upper 70s, Los Angeles in the 70s. But once again, the heat continues. Looks like it's some pretty extreme uh, temperatures for Thursday, Friday and Saturday in the Phoenix area. Yes, yeah, some intense fall heat there. Yeah, Mark, thank you. Police in Hawaii have arrested a man at an airport with the equivalent of 12,000 lethal doses of fentanyl. Olaf Sailor of Honolulu tried to go through security at Hilo International Airport when he was flagged for having an airsoft pistol inside his carry-on bag. TSA members searched Sailor's bag and found more than 24 grams of fentanyl. A deadly dose of the drug can be as little as two milligrams. Sailor was booked into the East Hawaii Detention Facility and is facing a number of charges. Coming up tonight here on West Coast Wrap, from trash to treasure in Arizona. Tonight, see how old signs are being turned into fashion statements. Also, adults took the advice of a 12-year-old in Utah. See how her ideas are now bringing joy to her entire community. Better than I imagined, and it's so beautiful. The starting quarterback for the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, says he will not be playing another game this season over a disagreement about off the field commitments. Matthew Sluka made that surprise announcement on social media after leading his team to three consecutive wins to start off the season. His agent told ESPN Sluka was verbally promised a minimum of $100,000 by an assistant coach, which so far has not been paid. UNLV Athletics issued a statement calling Sluka's decision a violation of NCAA rules. A 12-year-old in Clearfield City, Utah, tapped into her creativity to design a new playground. Fox's Maitali Gubi shows us how her entire community is benefiting from her vision. To see her excitement today, that was awesome. That gets at my heart a little bit. This is no ordinary playground. This has been a fun process and I kind of hate to see it in. I'm Fox 13 News reporter Maithili Gubi here in Clearfield City, where one young resident's vision has come to life and is something her whole community can enjoy. 
You want it from here? It's even better than I imagined, and it's so beautiful. Rosalie Olson is 12 years old. See this new playground in Clearfield? Well, it all started with her sketches when she drew the playground she wanted to play with her little sisters on. Because I love them, and um, we're all four years apart, and they're both unique and different, and I wanted them to have fun in a park. And Rosalie's mom took her to City Hall with her drawings. I'm the fortunate one who got the chance to talk to her, and we sat down with her and went through every one of those drawings. There, there are labels. She has details of what everything is, what it's supposed to do. And she put a ton of time into that and a lot of thought. I met Rosalie in February and she showed me her designs. The city developed concepts with their playground equipment vendor and Rosalie has been involved every step of the way. Every day that I would um, have to go there for another meeting, I would tell my friends, I'd be like, I'm gonna go again, woohoo. <laughs> On Tuesday, the playground was officially open. This was Bicentennial Park before. Rosalie's family watched as the city installed the playground. I, I really thought that it was similar to what Rosalie thought was, you know, they would say thank you so much for your efforts, things like that, and just kind of, you know, really my purpose was to show her kind of how it worked and, and wanted her to really understand the full process of it, and so for it to go this far was really awesome. And, and now there's a park for kids of all ages to enjoy, something families tell me they are thrilled about. So nice to be able to come to one park and everybody be entertained. From her pages to the park, Rosalie made her dreams come true. It's amazing. It's so, 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 so fun. In Clearfield, I am Mike Legal B, Fox 13 News, Utah. What a fantastic job by Rosalie. All right, finally tonight, a home and garden show in Arizona is taking recycling to the next level, repurposing vinyl billboard signs into something people can take home. The project in Phoenix pulled sign materials from the April 2024 home show campaign and turned them into duffel bags, grocery totes, lunch coolers and crossbody slings. It recycled about 500 pounds of vinyl material from ending up in a landfill. The director of the home shows, Katie Jones, says it took a while to find someone local who was up to the task of converting the billboards. I asked anyone, could anyone turn these really thick vinyls into bags? And this uh, seamstress just answered the call. And so all of this was made locally and pulling the banners off from the campaign. It's cleaning them, it's cutting them, it's putting them into the shapes, and it's using an industrial machine to shape them and, and get what you see here. And those bags will be available online and at the Home and Garden Show, which starts this Friday. That's where guests can watch even more of those bags being made in real time. But those bags look fantastic and what a great idea there. That does it for West Coast Wrap. We appreciate you watching and a quick reminder before we head off here, you can stay up to date on all the stories we are covering online at our website, westcoastwrap.com. And you can stream our shows on your smart TV with the free Fox local app as well. Have a great night.